The Apple Doll by Elisa Clevin. Lizzie loved her apple tree. She loved to pretend it was a skeleton rattling in the autumn wind, a gingerbread cake with snowy frosting, a blossomy springtime cloud, a leafy summer circus. She loved to eat its apples, apples for crunching, apples for munching, apples for applesauce, cider, and pies. The day Lizzie started school, she picked her favorite apple of all. It was round as a ball, warm as the sunlight, too happy to pack in her lunchbox. Lizzie rubbed the apple's freckled skin against her cheek. She told the apple a secret. I'm scared to start school, she whispered. What if I don't make any friends? I'll be your friend, Lizzie pretended the apple whispered back. Lizzie named her apple Susanna and made her an apple twig body. Susanna danced in the treetop. Lizzie, called her mother, come down now, you'll be late for school. Here I am, Mama, said Lizzie. And here is your sandwich and juice, Mama said. Now why did you put that apple on a stick? It won't fit in your lunchbox. That's okay, Lizzie replied. I'm gonna keep this apple. An apple won't keep forever warned Lizzie's big sister, Jill. It'll get all mushy and rotten. Lizzie drew a face on Susanna. She held her up like a puppet and said, Mushy? Rotten? Not me. Jill made a face of her own. You're always pretending, Lizzie. School will be good for you. You'll make some real friends. Lizzie wasn't so sure. As she sat in her new classroom and looked at all the strange faces, Lizzie wished she could run home and hide in her apple tree. She breathed in Susanna's sweet smell and felt better. Susanna was a small piece of her tree. No food during class time, Lizzie, said Lizzie's teacher, Mrs. Maxwell. We wait until lunchtime to eat. She isn't food, said Lizzie, showing Miss Maxwell Susanna's smiling face. Miss Maxwell didn't smile back. No toys during class either, except on sharing day. Please put your apple away now. At lunchtime, Lizzie took Susanna out again. Is that a doll? asked a girl named Molly. Lizzie nodded. Her name is Susanna. I like her leafy hair, said Molly. Susanna needs a haircut, yelled a boy named James, snapping off Susanna's stem. She needs clothes, said a girl named Kate. Lizzie wrapped her napkin around Susanna's twiggy body. She has a dress, she said. Why don't you play with a real doll, asked Kate. An apple's a silly doll. Her brains are apple seeds, said James. Lizzie felt like crying, but Susanna just smiled peacefully. You don't have to go to school anymore, Lizzie told Susanna later that day, but you do need new hair. After a hug and a snack, Lizzie gathered some scraps of yarn. She gave Susanna soft brown hair and a ride on her dragon and some bright clay animals to play with. Lizzie hoped Susanna would never be lonely while she was at school. But Lizzie was lonely. The weather was getting colder. The family was busy baking and canning and drying apples for winter. This will be delicious when all the fresh apples are gone, Mama said. Your apple isn't looking too fresh, Lizzie, Jill said. Why don't you make another doll out of a sock or something? I don't want another doll, said Lizzie. I wish Susanna would last forever. Maybe you could freeze her with the pies, said Jill. Lizzie shook her head. Susanna would hate it in the freezer. You could plant her in the ground. Jill suggested. After a while, her seeds would take root and she'd grow into a baby apple tree. But I don't want to plant Susanna, Lizzie said. I couldn't hold her if she was a tree. You can climb in her, said Jill, and eat her apples in the fall, and every spring she'd blossom. Lizzie thought about that as she watched Papa skin apples for drying. Suddenly she had an idea. Could we dry Susanna? she asked. Why didn't I think of that, said Mama. My grandma made me a dried apple doll when I was small. 
And it didn't get mushy or rotten? asked Lizzie. Never, Mama said. We'll have to peel Susanna first, but don't worry. I think you'll like watching her change. Lizzie helped Mama peel Susanna and give her a new face. Now we'll soak her in le a lemon juice bath so bugs and worms won't eat her, said Mama. And then she can dry out for a week or so. Each day, Susanna got a little more wrinkled and smiley. She smelled as fresh as ever, though, like apples and lemons together. And one morning, Lizzie gave her cotton hair, blue bead eyes, a lacy shawl, and bendable new pipe cleaner body because her old twig body was feeling a bit stiff. Wow, said Mama when she saw her. Susanna looks better than new. She looks old, said Papa, and very happy and strong. She looks like a little grandma, said Jill. You should show her off at school, Lizzie. It is sharing day today, added Mama. What if the other kids tease her, asked Lily. Jill held up Susanna like a puppet. Tease is such a strong, happy, wise old woman, she asked. Never! So Susanna returned to school. This is my apple doll, said Lizzie when it was her turn to share. What an unusual doll, Miss Maxwell said. Where did she come from? Well, she came from my apple tree, Lizzie began. She used to be an apple, and she still is an apple. But we dried her, and now she's real, exclaimed Molly. She looks alive. I wish I had a grandma doll, said Kate. I want an apple grandma, yelled James. Your doll is very intriguing, Lizzie, said Miss Maxwell. How would you like to teach us all how to make apple people for our art project tomorrow? Lizzie smiled. You start with apples. Next morning, an apple sat on every desk. Apple people soon danced through the classroom. Lizzie and Susanna had many new friends to play with at home and at their tree. In spring, summer, autumn, and winter, they always had each other, too. And here's how to make an apple doll. The end.